Hello, and thank you for joining us for this week's episode of Raising OKC Kids. Today, we are talking about how the arts, specifically movement and music, can be therapeutic and helpful for so many of us, but especially kids with physical challenges and disabilities. Joining us today is Shannon Wrights, founder, director, and CEO of Aspiring Attitudes in OKC, as well as her right-hand person and office manager, Sherry Bradshaw. Thank you both for joining me today. Thank you for Thank having you. us. Yes, yeah, so let's go ahead and start with some introductions because I definitely want to, everyone to know um, a little bit about you. So Shannon writes as the director, CEO, and founder of Aspiring Attitudes Dance Studio and has a degree in dance management from Oklahoma City University. Aspiring Attitudes is a dance studio that brings students of all ages and abilities together to participate in a full dance experience. Shannon has been teaching for 35 years and has developed the concept for the studio while doing a project in college. Shannon was born with congenital glaucoma and knows firsthand the challenges faced by individuals with special needs. Her dream was to create a studio where everyone would get the chance to dance. Our, her goal is to never turn away any student regardless of their physical, developmental, emotional, or even financial limitations. And with her is Sherry Bradshaw, the treasurer on the board of directors for Aspiring Attitudes and an avid volunteer at the studio. She has retired from the U.S. Postal Service and coached Special Olympics for over 15 years. She got involved with Aspiring Attitudes when several of the athletes on her team started taking dance with Shannon, which is just a small world and apparently meant to be because you two just seem like two peas in a pod. <laughs> And I'd love to open up this interview with knowing more from you about your clear passion. So Shannon, let's start with you. What first got you involved in dance and why have you felt called to make it your life's work? As long, as far back as I can remember as a child, I have always wanted to dance. It just was like a part of me. It just seemed like something I had to do. And I was able to take dance when I was six. And um, I remember only being able to do it for about a year. Then my parents got divorced and I had to stop for a while. Mm -hmm. And um, then when I was 15, I moved in with my grandparents because my mother had passed away. And they had asked me if I wanted to do an activity over the summer, something to keep me occupied. And I was like, oh, dance. Now's my opportunity to dance again. And so I started dance at a very small studio and loved it. And then um, I went to college and got a degree in dance management. And one of my classes in the study program was to design a fictitious dance studio and set it all up. And at that time, I named the studio Aspiring Attitudes because I wanted to have a place where everybody could dance. That is so beautiful. It's like you were born with this as your <laughs> passion and calling. And I just love to hear that. <laughs> Sherry, how about you? You got started in Special Olympics, but what brought you to the studio? Um, like I said, well, you said in the intro, um, several of my athletes on the team danced with Shannon. And then we kind of crossed back and forth between uh, like she would bring her cheerleaders to my fundraisers for Special Olympics and I got her involved in Special Olympics. They have dance um, competitions or dance festivals, I guess they're called. Arts festival, little yeah. dance festival. And so I got her, so we were kind of crossed back and forth. And then when Shannon moved out of her home into the actual studio, um, I just out of asked her, I said, would, she was asking me for ideas on fundraising and I, I saw her website and I asked her very gently, <laughs> um, would you like some help with your social media? And she said, yes. And then it just kind of evolved from there. And then now she, I, I help, I do the office management. I also help with some of the classes. Um, she's got me, she's teaching me tap, <laughs> teaching me ballet. So I, I have no background in dance other than the past couple of years when Shannon's been teaching me. So I just love hearing that you two are clearly both passionate individuals and your path were meant to cross is kind of the moral of the story <laughs> Yes, <laughs> and, yes. and to come on into the studio. So let's talk about the studio a little bit more. 
You are learning TAP, Cheryl, um, and TAP is all offered at Aspiring Attitudes, um, traditional classes like ballet and jazz as well. Um, but I also see a class listing on your site for wheelchair ballet. So I'd love to talk for you to talk about how you structure your classes for kids of varying levels and physical challenges. Um, Shannon, let's go ahead and start with you. Okay, um, wheelchair ballet class is a designed after an actual ballet class. They go to the bar, they do bar exercises, um, they just turn their chairs and then they put, you know, the correct hand on the bar and then they do arm movements with the other arm. Um, and then we do bar, we, we do stretching, we do, cause they can um, stretch certain ways in their wheelchairs. Um, we do center work, we do across the floor, they learn small combinations, and then, you know, also learn routines to perform at our different performances. Um, so that's the wheelchair ballet class. Um, I have um, a little girl that is confined to a wheelchair, and she has very limited movement, and so um, we have a philosophy at the studio that dance is simply movement to music, whatever that looks like. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't always look like, um, you know, major ballet company dancers or dancers in, a, in the Rockettes or anything, but simply movement to music. And so this little girl, we're working with her using, um, working on clapping, working on just kicking her legs. Um, small head movements, shaking a ribbon, um, so that she gets movement and she has little different activities that go with all the different songs that she has designed for her private lesson. And um, that's how we ha have class for her. And then I have another student that has um, very limited movement in her joints, like um, she can't lift her arms she can't bend her elbows, she can't bend her knees. She's walking and can walk pretty well and can do some dance moves with her feet as long as it's not requiring her knees to bend. And she loves jazz and um, she wasn't able to get down up and down up off the floor by herself. So what I have done is I've taken two gymnastic mats folded, completely folded and stacked them on top of each other and she is able to sit herself down on the mat and do like um, a little fan roll and some other things on the mats so that she gets the experience of going down on the floor and then coming back up and then continuing a routine, just as if she was able to go down on the floor and stand up. Um, oh, and the other thing um, that I have done to help with all different abilities is I've discovered that the students that have autism love visual images. And so I've created notebooks that flip with different cards. Um, and like, I have different spots on the floor that different colors on the floor. And they, I can say, go to yellow, go to red, go to pink. And then the flip cards in the notebook have different things to do when they get to the color like either heel steps or turn around or toe backs or jump open, jump close. And the students that have autism really love their notebooks because they, they get to where they can pretty much, I just flip the card and then they're doing what's on the card. Even if they have very limited reading skills, they know what's on the card. <laughs> That is awesome. I'm sure it was overwhelming at first to try to be tailoring all of your lessons to all different levels and abilities, but I love how you found those solutions. I'm sure that's so meaningful to the kids and the parents that they can really feel that confidence boost of being able to participate and being proud of themselves in class every day. I just love to hear that. And it's a continuing process. It's like, there probably isn't a day go by that we don't learn something new that works. And it's, 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 a, it's trial and error. <laughs> and Shannon is marvelous at, you know, trying new things or thinking, okay, maybe this will work. Let's try this. Let's see if this will work. Or accidentally, sometimes we find things that will work. 
Every kid is so different. And this is yes. probably a spotlight on that. <laughs> that, that yes, yes. Yes, that you're really, you know, learning things about kids every day. And, um, you know, so we're, we all get in bad moods some days. So we've been kind of adjusting, like, is this a one-time thing? Or is this a plan that's going to work for a long time? I really admire how you work with each student and really try to find you know, props and tools and methods to kind of bring them out and make them feel comfortable in the room. Yes. And even if a kid's having, um, a student's having a really bad day, sometimes I'll just totally off road the normal plan and just, just try to find fun stuff any way to get the kid, the student to interact. And so I try not to be, there's got to be a plan because they thrive on a plan and I like a plan but I'm also try to be very flexible to how they're feeling that day and just try to encourage participation. That's the mark of a good teacher. I needed to take some of those skills with me as a parent too. So I appreciate <laughs> <that>. <laughs> Hannon, you opened up a little bit about your dance journey as a child that you loved it right away, but you know, some family challenges, um, extreme challenges, you weren't able to really be a dancer your whole life. And on top of that, I'm sure it wasn't easy finding a studio like the one you now own that could cater to your own needs. Um, were you able to find, do you feel, the guidance needed as a young performer? I didn't really get into um, looking for a studio to learn the, you know, a lot of technique and stuff until I was in college. The studio that I joined when I was in high school, I was a big fish in a little pond and I excelled real quickly there because I just loved it. And I took everything they taught me home and I practiced and practiced and practiced. And she did a lot of little performances and I absolutely loved being on stage, being in front of an audience. And so when I went to college and started majoring in dance, I realized I didn't have much technique. And because college is a place for increasing your skills in something you already have, they don't didn't go back to the basics a lot. And, you know, because that's not what college is designed to, to do. And so I started seeking out um, local dance studios to help me get the training that I actually needed because placements required and technique and just different things that I wasn't taught originally. And so I tried to find a couple of studios and it was kind of hard because not many people wanted to work with somebody who was visually impaired. I, you know, so I finally found a studio and a lady taught me several private lessons and then also helped me get integrated into a class. And she taught me by feel how it felt to be properly placed. And so that was very helpful. And um, I still didn't move up as high as I would have liked to in the class levels at college, but I feel like I got a, you know, pretty good foundation for everything that I need to teach the students. And so much of placement in dance, it seems, is how it feels. I mean, it's a very muscular activity. You need to know where you are in space, where your body can move. And so I can imagine how helpful that would be for anybody, but especially when someone's standing in front of you just saying, do what I do, you know, that's not helpful. <laughs> right. Feel it. So that's, that's really encouraging to hear. And I'm sure that made you a better teacher as well, because you were able to communicate clearly how other people can, can do that as well. And I've learned just through all my years of teaching that every student learns differently. And so I use visual cues, auditory cues, um, anything that if I have to get hands on with the kids, you know, to put their arm in a position so that they feel what it feels like. I try to use all the different learning styles so that each kid or student, you know, can have the best experience they can have, how, whatever their learning style is. How awesome. And I'm sure they just so appreciate you for that. 
I want to talk to you. Um, I saw on your website that you offer adult classes, which I'm sure would have come in handy for you as well, growing up and really still wanting to be in this performing arts area. Um, so I want to hear from you, though. Why did it feel important to offer classes for varying ages? Um, when I very first started teaching in my home, and started getting several special needs students, a lot of them were older teenagers and they couldn't find a place. They were students that wanted to dance, but they couldn't find you know, a place that would teach, work with them. And those, as I worked with them year after year, those teenagers became adults and they didn't want to quit dance. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that there was, there's a big need for activities for adults with special needs. So I just continued working with them. It wasn't a matter of like starting a new program. It was just like, I've got these students and just because they graduate from high school, they still want to dance. So I just continued with them. And that's kind of how we ended up with the whole adult program. And now I even have, you know, some adult beginning classes for, you know, um, typical individuals um, just because adults, when they get older, you know, decide they want to try something new. So. That's so true. Yes. Um, I know you two have both been a part of the studio, Shannon, obviously, since the very beginning. Cheryl, you've been here for a very substantial amount of time. Um, and I'd love to hear a little bit more about what you two have experienced and observed out of the kids in the studio. We've all heard about the healing powers of arts and specifically music. Can you tell us a little bit more how you've seen your students learn and grow in confidence and also skill through the programs you offer at Aspiring Attitudes? Um, I have two students that have actually taken their first steps individually in a dance class. One in particular was a little girl that we went to during um, during COVID, when my students weren't able to come to the studio in person, we went to their driveways and took a big block rocker and taught them in their driveway. And one of the um, students was, we took a big tumbling mat and rolled it out on her, laid it out on her driveway. And her mom was the one doing it. You know, we kept distant and um, we put on music and she took some of her first steps ever. She has spina bifida. She's uses a walker and now crutches, sometimes a wheelchair in public to get around, you know, quickly. But um, now she can take up over like 300 steps by herself and will end up doing um, like routines where she's in her crutches and then she'll like throw her crutches on the floor and then take off walking a few steps and then do some steps without her crutches. So um, that's got to, you know, she just she loves dance and will improve in her physical skills because it's in the name of dance and i can imagine you kind um, of have to get out of your own head and your own space and your own you know you create these limitations for yourself even in your own mind and dance i feel like music in general can take you out of that can put you in a new character if you will <laughs> and then right. to remove some of those even just mental blocks and barriers and and then even like we said just the confidence building and the skills you're working on every day i'm sure that all contributed to those first steps that is beautiful and um i have another student who is actually an adult now she started with me when she was a teenager and she is confined to a wheelchair and when she first started it was go to this color clap your hands go to this color you know, lift your hands above your head, go to this color, turn around. And now this particular student is able to, after um, years of practice, and now she can do an entire routine on stage all by herself. And just in this last year, year and a half, she's learned how, learned, learned, good grief, mm -hmm. learned how to count music and she can actually stay on count with her movements and turn her wheelchair, her power chair in a circle to the count of eight so that she's back around to the front at the end of the eight. So um, 
that's kind of really cool to watch, you know, the fact that the students tend to just keep learning and learning and learning and learning. Even as adults, they don't plateau. They just keep growing and learning new ideas and new concepts. Beautiful. Oh, and um, uh, Sherry keeps reminding me, um, we have a list of people I wanted to cover. There's yes. just so many. Um, I have another student um, right now, and she's only been with the studio for about eight months. And she... Um, she's ambulatory, she's up walking and, um, she has trouble focusing and coordination is very challenging for her. But when she gets a step, she is so excited. And anytime anybody new comes in the room or like when class is over, she'll run out and tell her mom, just like sidestepping. I mean, which was really a challenge for her to learn she will come to class every single day and go, watch my side steps, watch my side steps. And she'll do them from like color to color going, watch me, watch me. So just that she, you know, has found that she can learn stuff and then be proud of what she's learned and worked on. Absolutely. I love to hear that. I mean, that enthusiasm is magnetic, right? <laughs> and that's what we're going for. That's what we're really hoping that kids have, I mean, any kid, you want them to find that thing that really makes them light up and feel proud of themselves and really gives them energy. They'll remember that for the rest of their lives. This is just beautiful to hear. Thank you for sharing all of that. Are there any other stories? I don't want to cut you off because I love hearing all of this. <laughs> um, that's for right now. Those are the ones that we had for that question. <laughs> well, so. and, and the other thing is Shannon likes, to, you know, one of Shannon's concepts is you are who you are before you have a disability. Mm. So if you're a dancer, you're a dancer. It doesn't matter if you're in a wheelchair or if you have limitations. Um, we have students that, I mean, they live to come to the studio. The one that she was talking about that's uh, learned to count and learned to do the routines. She takes six classes a week and would literally live at the studio if we let her. And I, if you ever met her and talked to her, she's a dancer. Yeah. She is absolutely 100% a dancer. And, and a performer. Yeah, and a performer. Oh yeah, she she just beams when she performs. So it, it's, I yeah, we could, I mean, the stories are just um, endless. Just all of the students just all just and we like to we celebrate everything small the smallest accomplishment to the biggest of leaps it's like it's it's all we we celebrate all of it <laughs> as you should that's amazing you never know where these kids are going to take this passion and skill level that they have shani you've made a whole career out of your passion for dance you know you're touching the next generation in a very concrete way and that's what we all hope to do so i hope you feel proud of yourselves to pouring into these lives of these kids that are going to then go out and touch others um, where they might have not otherwise had the opportunity to pursue their passion in this way. So that's just lovely to hear. It kind of fires me up as well. So I appreciate <laughs> hearing all of that. I wanna hear more about your recitals. You do a holiday show, um, including, you know, whoever in the community can come. How can we as a community support these performances and these dancers and really be a part of what you're doing at Aspiring Attitudes? Okay, we have every year, we have our annual recital, which is coming up on May the 7th. And um, at recital, it's it's pretty much what you think of as, you know, a dance recital. It's everybody that's in a class gets to perform. And so um, we have a lot of solos, have our group classes and all of that. They're long, um, but the kids love them. You know, they get to do their routines. They get to show off for the parents and grandparents and everybody. Those all of our shows are open to the public and um we every time we're every time we're gearing up for a show, all that information is always on our website. And um, so recital is pretty much typical recital. Um, we also have an annual fundraiser, which is called our end of summer showcase spectacular. Yes, long name, but <laughs> um, it's always at the end of August. It's our fundraiser this year. We are very fortunate that we're going to be able to have it at the Cowboy Hall of Fame. Um, and 
it's a it's a performance the kids dance we have a dinner we have um, a silent auction we have a dessert auction we have a raffle and um the public that this is open to the public as well and basically people come in they eat dinner sit at their tables every 15 minutes or so we do 10 or 15 min minutes of dancing and then have a little break so people can you know visit and all of that um that's that that'll always the information for that's always on our website and then in december we have our christmas show which is called the fabulous christmas and it's a it's usually the showcase and the christmas show are around an hour to an hour and a half a piece we keep them short so that because no, not many people want to sit through a four-hour recital and even when you have someone in it it's a long time to sit and watch dance so our, our other shows are, are shorter so that people can come and see because we can talk about the studio all day, but there's something very powerful about actually seeing it, actually seeing the kids perform. Um, it's just, I can't, it, you just can't describe um, what it's like to be at one of the performances. It's, it's very, very cool. The other thing I'd like to bring up, we also have dance camps. We have a junior dance camp in June, and that's June the 4th, 5th, 5th, 5th through, through the 9th. 9th. And that's for kids up to, from six to 12. And we have that at the studio. It's about four hours a day, every day for a week. And they learn dance steps, dance routines. They learn probably four to five routines that they then perform for their parents at the end of the week on Friday. We have a little show. They do crafts, they hang out with their friends. Um, it's just a lot of fun. And then we have a senior dance camp in July, and that's the 10th through the 14th. Through the 14th. That's for kids, uh, people 12 and up. Sorry. We call all of our students kids, whether <laughs> they're two years old or 29. They're just like when they grow when you grow up with them, they're just your kids. And so um senior camp is for students 12 years and older. It's at Capitol Hill Baptist Church. And again, it's about what five hours a day? Yes, it's five hours a day. Same thing. They learn dance routines, do a performance for the parents, learn crafts, and all of that. So, um, and both camps are what we call integrated, meaning that um, both um, special needs and typically developing dancers can attend. It's a good opportunity for like sibling groups if families have you know a child with special needs and then a neurotypical developing child, they can do something fun together. Um, so we just wanted to <laughs> throw that in there. I'm glad you said that because I'm sure there are a lot of parents that are like, I don't want to be driving all over the city, dropping my kids here and there. <laughs> and if they can right. do something that kind of promotes sibling bonding, that's what we'll sign up for. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's awesome. And I assume you still have room in your summer camps as well. At this yes. point, yes. At this point we do, yes. Right. Yes. I know they're I know. quickly. Yeah. All the information for that is also on our website. Perfect. Thank you so much for telling us about that. If we do have a family member or a friend or a neighbor who might be interested in signing up for regular season classes at Aspiring Attitudes or summer camp, what can they expect as a brand new student? I know many kids are shy to new programs, um, even if they aren't facing difficult diagnosis as you know autism, as you talked about before, they might not know what to expect when they come in the door. Um, how do you kind of orient new students into your program and make them feel comfortable? Okay, for, and first off, I'd like to say we take students all year round. We have spring, summer, and uh, winter classes. and. Our enrollment is open all the time. Um, when someone uh, someone contacts us, we have them fill out a form that gives us a little bit of information. Um, and then they schedule a meet and greet. They come to the studio, Shannon meets with them. She'll do, a, it's usually about 30 to 45 minutes. She'll do some activities with them to music to kind of assess where they are and to see whether she thinks they would fit better in a private lesson or in a group class. And then she discusses with the parents what would be the best fit. Um, a lot of times they it might be a better fit for them to go into a private lesson for a little bit to kind of learn a little bit about the dance world and then move on to a group class. Um, or sometimes they sign up for a private lesson and a group class or 
it's just whatever Shannon and the parent decide would be the best fit for the child or for the student. And then um, Shannon creates when once she has the student and has assessed them, she creates a playlist of music for however long their class is going to be and um, decides which dance activity is going to go with each song, what props going to go with each song. We use a lot of props. We have drums, rhythm sticks, castanets, tambourines, uh, cymbals. And so she she structures it for each one. So they'll come into class and they'll, you know, have whatever shoes on they need for whatever particular style they're doing. And then Shannon runs through their playlist and they do each activity and she hands on, does the stuff with them. Shannon dances a lot mm -hmm. <laughs> in the course of a day. So that's, um, did I cover all of that? I think so. Okay. I think so. That's pretty, yeah. that's pretty much what goes down when they come in. And then like um, for brand new parents, if, you know, um, it's kind of hard to, you know, drop off a kid and just like walk out the door and not know what's going on. So um, until they feel comfortable, we allow them in the studio. And um, when they get comfortable, we have in the lobby, we have closed circuit um, cameras, the TV so that they can watch class from the lobby so that they always know what's going on in class. I love that. And I love to hear that as a parent, because you do want to kind of be a part of what they're doing, even if it's, you know, to be able to talk on the car ride home about what they learned. It's kind of nice to have that common thread. So I appreciate you, yeah. you saying that, yes, and offering that. I so appreciate hearing about this studio, about what you all are doing in the lives of others. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us today about your program, your passion. I know many of our listeners appreciate information like this and just being, you know, inspired to really kind of reach out and pursue passions and help others do the same, no matter where their life circumstances have taken them. So I really appreciate your time. And as we wrap up, I'd love to hear from you, maybe just this one one thing that brings you hope and encouragement through your work every day um, and either of you start um my thing that i get the biggest excitement out of is when i see the joy on the kids faces when they've mastered something that they've been working really hard at getting their faces just light up and you know their body posture is just light and air and they're just so excited to show anybody and tell anybody about what they've learned and for me, you said something earlier about how much we put into this and how much work must be involved, but I really truly feel like we get way more out of it yeah. than we put in. <laughs> yeah. Because just, I mean, you can't, when we have a, a young man that has speech apraxia and he doesn't say a lot of words, and when he comes into the building and I tell him hi, and, he's, and he says, hi, Sherry, it's it's just oh my heart just melts you know it's just their smiles and how genuinely happy they are to be there it's just I mean we get way more out of it than and we then, put into it and then we hear stories about kids who this has to be on their calendar yeah. dance is what they 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 like go to bed at night going is dance tomorrow is dance tomorrow yeah. and if we don't have dance the parents have to like schedule something in advance to replace dance or there's meltdowns and all kinds of, you know, because the kids really enjoy coming. They love it. They look forward to it. And you too love it. I mean, all of this is just <laughs> infectious. Thank you so much for sharing. <laughs> Thank you so much. Today. Yes. Thank you for being here. And for those of you listening, you can learn more about Aspiring Attitudes at www.aspiringattitudes.com. They are on Facebook and Instagram under the same name. Thank you again and join us next time on Raising OKC Kids.